Hello, beautiful people. How are you doing? Hope you guys are doing okay, beautiful people of gold. Welcome back to my channel. Okay, welcome back. So, in this sit down video, you guys, I came bearing news, I came bearing good stuff for you guys. All right, so I just quickly want to unbox this what I have here before I move right into the video of today. Okay, so I got this bag from Tick One. So, Tick One is a company that specializes in uh, designer replicas. Any kind of designer handbag, Christian Dio, Chanel, uh, Gucci, Leo Vuitton, any kind of designer handbag. When you think of replica designer handbag, then think of thick one. Okay, I'm gonna be unboxing this one with you guys. Okay, so this is a Leo Vuitton PM handbag, and it was sent to me by thick one. Okay, so let's quickly open this and see what's the inside looks like so before we go into the unboxing proper i just really want to talk a little bit about the packaging okay they come really packaged with you know good looking boxes this is the box and this is what it looks like so it's open and this is the whole box let me keep it like this so that you guys will be seeing what i mean this is the products and it came with all this. Let me show you guys. Mm. So this one came with this bag, and it has all this authenticity receipts and all of this stuff inside here. Let me quickly open it so you guys will see. Okay. Yep. So yeah, that is it. The receipt, like I said, and all this kind of authenticity stuff. So the box is empty now. Now let's get right into the product itself. Okay, this is it. Let's get right into this. I'm excited already. <laughs> okay, beautiful people. This is the bag. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what the bag is looking like. <laughs> We will come into details for this bag, but first of all, you guys, I got to admire this. When you touch it, let me show you guys a closer look. Oh my God, this is your focus. Yeah, this is what it looks like. So this bag is the on the go PM, okay? Is the PM? This is the smallest size of this kind of model. I think it has PM, it has MM, and it has GM. I think yeah. So PM, this is petite. Yeah, this is the smallest size and that's what i got all right beautiful people okay so let's start with the inside okay it came with this handle and yeah that's basically what it came with and this is what the inside looks like i will show you guys a closer view of what the bag looks like okay but first i got to open this why wouldn't I go for original instead of going for replica? <laughs> you, <laughs> if you know me very well, you know that I like slaying on a budget. I like slaying on a budget. That is why I cannot come and kill myself by myself, okay? Look good on a low budget, okay? You don't need to break the bank. That's what the handle is looking like. And the fact that they are paying attention to every detail is really nice. Like, it looks more like the original one. Look, let me tell you this point. yeah so you guys see that you see the blue wrap that is used in covering it this is how the original one comes and let me tear it off hold on let me rip it off yeah and also when you look here you see it's also the name Louis Vuitton is also written there can you guys see it I will show you guys in a bit okay so I'm just gonna tear this off yeah so you guys i fixed it up those of you who know this bag knows this is what it looks like okay let me bring it closer yeah so this is the handle this is what it looks like you can carry it like this and you can also carry it you know with the smaller handle and you guys this looks so much like the original now you guys <laughs> i even took the liberty of going to leave it on website to see you know what is the difference between this replica and you know the one in the 
Louis Vuitton website. Are you guys honestly? And there is no actual visible difference unless you want to go and be holding the bag like this. I'm looking at it, so you see whether this one is a replica or not. But I'm telling you guys, this bag is the real deal. Okay, it came with all these cards, the dust bag, and you know all of this kind of things that designers bag come with. And you guys, what are you waiting for? I'll rush now and go to Tikwon website and order yourself. A designer handbag slay on your budget <laughs> now let's talk about the details in this handbag this is what the inside looks like and on the inside it has this um leo vuitton here so you guys can see it has it here it has it here and also all the hardwares has leo vuitton written on them as well look at it here they all have leo vuitton here Leo Vuitton. Even in the zips, they all have Leo Vuitton. Now, you guys look. Look. See the detail. See the detail in this bag. Like, it's so, so good. If you're not told this is not the original, you're not gonna know. Trust me. You are not gonna know. I'll put a picture to show you guys what this bag looks like. Okay? Honestly, you guys. I'm very, very impressed with this piece. So if you need this bag, the link and every details you will need to purchase this bag from Thick One website will be in the description, okay? And also, you can use the code on the screen right now to get yourself a 16% discount of your purchase, okay? Be sure to check Thick One website and get yourself a designer handbag. Rock it with reckless abandon. Nobody we know is a rap like her. Trust me. They will okay. Not know. So beautiful people. Now that I have done the last work, let's go to the business of the day. You guys, sorry about the noise. Okay, my neighbor is cutting his grass. I don't know how somebody will be cutting grass by this time of the day. Anyway, so you guys, <laughs> this is our Japa Jody. <laughs> so apparently, we we've been in the UK for one year. Yeah, we've been in the UK. For one year now yeah a few days ago i think last week we we are one year here in the uk Yay! <laughs> so before the whole journey started i've already mentioned it in one of my videos i will link it up here put the thumbnail here so you guys can go watch it okay if you have not all right so the journey started and you know everything everything was going so well my husband got his cars and then it was now remaining for us to apply for visa we decided to do the priority visa application so we applied for our visa august last year yes we applied for our visa august last year i think uh last first week of august or so i think uh, no 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 no. we applied for our visa last week of july so when we applied for our visa we did the priority you know and everything now when you do priority you're supposed to get your visa response almost within five working days right yeah so that was how five days reached you. We didn't hear anything. One week, nothing. Two weeks, nothing. <laughs> that was when we knew that somehow it was about going to Jeremy. <laughs> so we started panicking. What are we going to do? What's up? I, you know. So it was on the third week that that's how we have already entered inside August. I think August second week now. Yeah, because we applied the last week of July. Yeah. So the second week of August, that was when. <laughs> This visa people called us. That call came from British High Commission. But before then, you guys, because we've been worried what is happening, we paid for priority and all of those things. So what we did, we you know asked we started asking questions. We didn't know what was the problem. Now, somebody told us that we should call TLS, they will have one or two information to give us regarding our visa delay or visa decision, whatever. So we started, we started looking for TLS number, we didn't see. And our visa application office was Abuja. The Abuja TLS office did not have any contact online. Like they don't have any physical, they don't have any, their phone number is not online. So we said, what are we gonna do? Should we call the Lagos people so that Lagos people will link us to Abuja people? We didn't know what to do. We didn't know, honestly, we didn't know what to do. All of our, our family members was panicking, my in-laws, my parents, everybody was panicking. What could be the problem? So we decided to look on the internet and we got and we got a um, British High Commission number. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> when we got the number, you call them during the day, you're wasting your time because they will never pick your call during the day. So somebody advised us that we should be calling them in the midnight. In the midnight, we will not sleep. That was how the midnight was load card. And you know, say so this if you're calling the 
and if you are calling that beauty child commission number, they charge you, I think, three naira per minute, a bit per second or something like that. So we'll load card, we'll load 2K, 3K, we'll be on the phone, you guys, we'll be on the phone. 30 minutes, 45 minutes, one hour, one hour plus. They're not going to pick call. It's okay. So that morning that I came back from uh, dropping the boys from school, my husband told me these people called though, that's, they called and they asked us to come to Abuja. We're not going to TLS office, oh. they called us to come to British High Commission Abuja. We were like, hey, we don't enter. What do we do? That's, we have been invited for an interview. <laughs> because, you know, in UK, getting a UK visa is very rare for UK office to invite you for an interview. Usually, when you apply for a UK visa, you just get it. As long as you meet all the necessary requirements. I know countries, something like Canada, America, and um, probably Australia, they invite people for an interview. But UK is not something that is common. So the, our attention, the attention come increase even more. We didn't know what to do. Why other people did application? Their own go where? Did biometrics, their own go where? So why encourage our own? You can't get a leg. So we were worried, like really, really worried. So they called us that morning that we should come to Abuja the next day, you guys. <laughs> we were like, what the hell? How are we going to do this? Look at the kids. Okay, we asked them, are we supposed to come with the kids? They said, no, just me and my husband. It's okay, no problem. Immediately, we booked our flights for the next day because our interview was the next, the following day, right? So when they dropped the call, that morning that we are supposed to leave Port Harcourt to Abuja, that morning... I said they knew our flight was around 12 p.m. that day. So they called us that same morning we were supposed to leave. They called us back and they told us, why coming? Hello, Mr. Austin. Why coming? You and your wife should bring pictures from way back, your marriage certificates and everything. And all. We were like, what is happening? We, we are not understanding. We are not understanding this kind of call and package and interview. What do you for side interview? God, so really, you guys, we, we are so so worried like so so worried we didn't know what to do so what we did thank god for google photos i now went to my google photos i started downloading my pictures i now went to my facebook from the time when i was in the university because i and my husband we met when i was in my second year so we took a lot of pictures from you know in those days we i went and downloaded all the pictures from way back from my facebook google photos every picture we could lay our hands on and luckily for us there is a a photo lab around that area so we went there that was the morning we are supposed to leave for Abuja for the interview so we went there we printed all some form of those pictures we printed about 30 something pictures as in print out pictures we brought the pictures we brought our photo album wedding photo album we brought our child education photo album and we also got our wedding certificate everything that they wanted us if even the ones they didn't ask us so that was after we got the pictures that was how we landed in abuja when we landed in abuja we prayed god now you know how this thing started we've tried this country we've tried this country this uk now we done the click now See what's in the soap, oh God, I bear, bro. you know, we are kind of worried. We know, honestly, you guys, we are kind of worried. Everybody around us, our family members, everybody was praying. And you know these people, eh? You know how they did? They called us the morning we were supposed to leave Port Harcourt to Abuja. They called us to bring pictures from way, way back. We are thinking, what could be the problem? For these people to call us this morning, because they called us yesterday, maybe they called us yesterday. They could have told us to bring those pictures, but no, they didn't tell us that yesterday. They called us this morning to bring pictures. That means something is fishy. Do you understand? Because they gave us a short window, there is no way we go and fabricate uh, pictures at that short notice. Like, do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. So, that was how we landed in Abuja. The next morning, we prayed, you know, we now on our way to because they want the lady that called us told us to come to British High Commission. And before they asked you to come to British High Commission, you know, say something happened. Do you understand? You know, say something happened. So we, we are actually we've lost hope, really. We've lost hope because we didn't know what was the problem. Our biometrics was okay, everything was okay. They didn't send us a message that something happened. Do you understand? So all we just heard that come to Abuja and been invited for an interview. No reason for that. So we got to Abuja. Um, when we got to the um, uh, British High Commission's office, you know, these military men, Mopo, all those kind of uh, forces, 
all of them dating. Yes, who are you? They didn't even allow us to go inside though. Because it's British High Commission. Heavily guarded building. That building is heavily guarded, you guys. So when we got there, we told the uh, military guys, and uh, we are invited for an interview. They were like, interview for what? Which country? We say UK. Say, ah, ah, go to TLS office. We say, don't be TLS office. Now this office, where we receive that call from, and they said we should come here this morning. Our appointment is by 10 a.m. They were like, no, it cannot be. And we should go to TLS. That was how we went to the TLS office. On getting there, of course, there is crowd, crowd. <laughs> so we gently went to the security people, the security officers there. We told them, oh, oh, see you. They are not here for collection. No. They asked us to come for an interview. They said, interview. And whoever that we told about the interview, they were like, for what? So we told them our predicament. So they said, okay, no problem. Since we are here on a different case, we should come inside. That was how we, they took us inside and we went upstairs. And when we got there, the office people there, they were like, yes. We said, we got a call. Blah, 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 blah. They said, it's not them. Anyway, we made them check. And we should sit down. While we were sitting down, a phone call now came in. The phone call came in from the High Commission. And they they told the lady that picked the call that so so person are supposed to be here. They are they asked them to call. They are coming from Putako, blah, 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 blah. We overheard that lady telling the person on the other side end of the phone that yes they are here do you understand so after she dropped the call she now told us that they asked us to go there why did we not come here we said maybe we went there military people saying we should come here we said okay no well, that we should go that was because we got there we got there before 10 o'clock by the time we came here it was past 10 by the time we came to tls it was past 10 in the morning and by the time we got back it was around 3, 11 or so so when we got there we told the military people maybe we told you now this is where they said we should come. That was how they opened the gate for us and we entered the side. You guys, yeah, the security said that beauty. Yeah? <laughs> um, we are already, me in particular, we, I was shaking like, Chineke na. Me say, I've never been in a kind of environment that has that kind of security tight, as in a security tight for that British High Commission building, as in a security tight for there. So when we walked inside, they scan you, do this one, do this one. That was how they said we should drop our phones, you know, all of those kind of things. So we dropped our phone. As you enter camera, they focus on you, they, if you scratch your head. <laughs> oh my God. Honestly, you guys, <laughs> I'm laughing now because I'm already in the UK, right? <laughs> at that point, at that day, it wasn't a joking matter. I'm telling you, it wasn't a joking matter. So when we got inside, they invited us. We sat down, asking the woman introduced herself. We noticed that on her table, all our passport, me, my husband, the kids' passports are on the table. So we were like in our mind, okay, maybe after the interview that they will not stand by office and begin the door. So the woman was asking us so many questions, you know, that uh, you know those kind of invading questions. So that was how we answered all those questions to the best of our knowledge. And at the end of the day, she sent the pictures. That was how we now carried <laughs> you guys. We carried our wedding photo book, child education photo book, and the pictures that we printed from that morning that we left Abuja. Um, the woman saw the pictures and she was like, this is a lot of pictures. Right? I said, yes, you people wanted pictures. So see pictures. So they took our pictures, they took about a few of them and make copies of those pictures. So they asked that in her head, they, they asking us when we got married and then traditional wedding and you know all those kind of questions we're like are you people doubting that we are married or and in fact that was what we were able to come up with because the kind of questions they were asking they didn't believe that we were actually married yeah because you know some people we just come together come then we just pretend as if we are a couple they will go abroad and they will go and do you understand so we believe that they didn't believe we are married whatever reason or whatever thing that gave them that you know we did we did not know so that was after the interview she said okay that will be all for the interview so okay thank you very much she asked me to wait that i will have to go and redo my biometrics that my biometrics has problem i was like so she directed me to one office like that i now went in there they redo my biometrics and they said we should go so we were like are we going like are we supposed to come back and take the passport <laughs> she said no <laughs> that the passport will be sent to uh, tls and tls will now get back to us 
He said, okay, no problem. That was how the interview went and we can go back to our hotel the following morning we went back to Puerto Rico. After four days, after like four days or five days, after we came back to Puerto Rico, we got a call from DHL. When the delivery guy now brought the documents, that was when my headache started. <laughs> They brought the passports, my own was not there. It was just my husband and the kids. I was like, God, what is this? What is these delays? What is all these frustrations? We opened that visa and the visa was stamped on the 31st of August. It's okay, no problem. At least they have their own. So immediately they got their visas, my husband and the kids. That was when we booked our flight. With the hope that maybe my own is because I had to do another biometrics, maybe to take one or two days or maximum of one week before my own will come. <laughs> so you guys, we booked our flight for middle of September on the, on the 19th precisely. Yes, we booked our flight on the 19th of September precisely. So when we booked our flight, we were now waiting. One day, don't work out. My own never show. Two days, my visa never show. Three days, one week. Two weeks, nothing. <laughs> We've already booked our flight. What am I supposed to do? Are we supposed, my husband supposed to travel alone? Then I will come with the kids or he will go with one of the kids. I will not come. We, we have so many things going on in our head. You had to call somebody and the person gave us a number of, a, somebody that works in TLS office. Yes. The person gave us the number of a staff that works in TLS office. So we had to call the person. That was how we called this guy and explain to them. My family has gotten their visa. I don't know what's keeping my blah, blah. I've already met by hell, you guys. Three days to our travel, my visa was not there. Two days to our travel, he had got back to me that he has seen my visa, it was just on the table. So that was how the guy now sent it to DHL and it was on its way to Patakot. Luckily for us, the following morning, which was on a Friday, DHL now called. They'll be delivering it later today as a clinic problem. So we waited for the dead uh, guy to call and said, Where are you? We are delivering it now. You know, when they are coming, they will call you. No calling. We are supposed to leave Portacot the next day to Lagos. I told my husband, I cannot keep waiting. Where is the headquarters of DHL in Portacot? Let me go to the head of quarters. If I lay a complaint there, they will be able to track it there and give me my passport. So that was how I now went to their office at uh, Transamade. There's one office like that at Transamade. So they both guy immediately I got to the Transamade office. My husband now called me that the uh, DHA guy has brought the visa. And that's how I told the Uber. Was it Uber? The boat. I think it was boat. I told the boat guy, please take me back to where you got me from. So when I got to the house, oh my god, I saw my passport. I was like, I sat in the morning, you guys. I haven't gotten my visa and hey it's actually one popcorn <laughs> but you guys can see i'm smiling i'm laughing i'm happy <laughs> 12 p.m dear chat didn't call me because, anyway this is a, it's a long story it's a long story but i thank god i thank god everything fell in place like thank you jesus thank you jesus and you guys you know the funniest part of this whole drama when I opened my visa, when I opened my passport, I noticed that my visa was stamped on the same date my husband and the case were stamped. So somebody removed mine and sent them. Do you understand? So it was just, according to that guy, it was just on the table. I was like, so somebody's visa will not be on the table. At least I've got my visa. Now I am happy. <laughs> So you guys, it was an exciting moment because we are supposed to leave Port Harcourt the following evening. So I got my passport a day before we left Port Harcourt. Yeah, it was so crazy, you guys. I don't even wish anybody to have this kind of experience because, because your high blood pressure will just stay here. It will go on. Hey, Jesus. It wasn't a good experience. It wasn't a good experience because starting from when they called us from that uh, we have an interview. Now, after the interview, they send passports. My own no comfort. It was, it was a really traumatic experience. Even though I was vlogging that time, I was vlogging because I just got to vlog everything. We, all we wanted was to travel as a family and luckily everything fell in place. So you guys, this is how I almost did not travel with my family. <laughs> so that is what happened, the beautiful people. And 
having said that thank you for joining me in this video i will see you guys in the next one okay